Hello, this is Georgina Rose, part-time esoteric content creator and part-time Scarlet Woman, and welcome back to the Dot Darling YouTube channel, where we discuss mysticism, the occult, religion, magic, and all those exciting topics. And today we're returning to my Occult 101 series, a series where I give beginner introductions to a wide array of occult paradigms and topics, and today we're going to be talking about the Golden Dawn system of magic and the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. So, uh, the Golden Dawn is a really instrumental system and is one of the basis of modern Western occultism. Uh, as a Thelemite, I feel very called towards Golden Dawn practices as Aleister Crowley, the founder of Thelema, was a member of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn for multiple years and took a lot from their teachings. Uh, fundamentally, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn laid out a modern ritual framework that basically led to traditions such as Thelema and Wicca emerging in the 1900s. So, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn is extremely important. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn was originally started by a group of male Freemasons who wanted to sort of get into a more overt form of ritual magic, as well as they wanted to incorporate women into their rituals, as Freemasonry does ban women from partaking in their operations. So, a group of Freemasons decided to found the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn uh, to create their own mystery school and to teach a magical system. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn is a really unique system. While they do pull from things like Hermetic Kabbalah, Rosicrucianism, and of course, classical Hermeticism, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn teachings are quite new. Uh, so they syncretize a wide variety of things and have created the baseline of what we know as modern Hermetic Kabbalah, as most modern Hermetic Kabbalists do take a lot of notes from the Golden Dawn system. So they, they merge a ton of things together. As well, uh, since, you know, Martinism, Rosicrucianism, and Freemasonry are very explicitly Abrahamic. An interesting addition is that the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn brought in a lot of Egyptian and Kemetic influences. At the time, there was very much an interest in Egyptology, and it was very much in trend in England at the time, but the Golden Dawn incorporates their um, influence pretty heavily. And a lot of these sort of rituals that foundate and make up the Golden Dawn sort of canon have a lot of Egyptian imagery, signs, metaphors, and drawing from. Cosmologically, the Golden Dawn follows the Hermetic cosmology and agrees with classical Hermeticism on sort of how the world is constructed. So while you do work with these sort of pagan god forms in Golden Dawn rituals, they are fundamentally a, a sort of more monotheistic system. Let me explain. So they sort of believe that these Egyptian gods and these more pagan expressions are expressions of the singular divinity. It's just an expression that we can sort of tap into. So when you look at Golden Dawn rituals, a lot of pagans complain they're too Abrahamic, and a lot of Abrahamic complain that it's too pagan, but in reality it's a mix of the two. And a lot of Hermetic Golden Dawn, um, in a lot of Golden Dawn rituals, specifically the pentagram and hexagram rituals, which are some of those popular rituals, specifically the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, a very popular banishing ritual that centers the practitioner in the center of their microcosm, allowing them to sort of control the microcosm, as well as preparing the space for a ritual to take place. Uh, a lot of the archangels are called upon, and there's a lot of references to Hermetic Kabbalah. Uh, when doing this ritual, you almost replicate a sort of Catholic cross, though you start with the right shoulder instead of the left. And so you can see in all these rituals a lot of imagery and references to these Abrahamic systems, but as well you're doing things that relate to sort of more pagan ideas. You're using the sign of Osiris slain, and you use references to Isis and various sort of more traditionally pagan um, imagery and concepts. So it is a very syncretist system. The Golden Dawn really tried to sort of catalog all these things together and correspond a vast array of esoteric concepts and ideas from around the world. Uh, modern tarot actually comes from the Golden Dawn, and when we look at the Golden Dawn's tarot system, they syncretize a lot of really diverse things together. So they brought in gematria, they brought in astrology, they brought in these sort of pagan deity imagery, uh, and they brought in, you know, the actual tarot itself, because prior to the Golden Dawn, tarot looked very, very different. Uh, Rider Waite deck, which came out of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn by two members, E.A. Waite and Pamela Coleman Smith, uh, was invented within the Golden Dawn concepts. So um, in the Golden Dawn, they would teach you to use the tarot as sort of flashcards and a Rolodex to understand the, the whole universe, which is why you hear the term that tarot is the pictorial key to the universe. In terms of ritual practices, 
The Golden Dawn is highly ceremonial. Much like the Freemasons that came before them, they really believe in dramatic ritual. Dramatic ritual, a lot of people kind of get weird and they're like, oh, it's just kind of like Brechtian figure if you're familiar with Bertolt Brecht's ideas. But um, when we look at these rituals, on the surface, they may seem kind of over the top, but when you break them down, they're highly formulated. So the Golden Dawn would formulate all these rituals based on numerology, Kabbalah, and make all their rituals be packed with meanings. Whenever there's a knock or whenever there's a certain gesture or a certain movement, it has explicit meaning and explicit correspondences that create the, mi the, mac the microcosm of the ritual to impact the macrocosm. So these rituals are very deep and layered. Um, a lot of people are kind of pulled away from the Golden Dawn because they don't like how um, how much it is. People can think that it seems over the top, especially with a thing that the Golden Dawn teaches called the LVX keyword, which appears in quite a few Golden Dawn rituals, and it consequentially also appears in Thelonic rituals. When you break down the LVX keyword, it can seem insane, right? Like that such a simple thing can mean so, so much and have so much metaphysical abstractions in it. But in reality, this is the beauty of the Golden Dawn system and why the Golden Dawn has held up to this day. So when we talk about the Golden Dawn, we are largely talking about the Order, and the Order does not exist currently. The sort of peak years of the Order, the Golden Days, lasted for about 15 or so years. Uh, and then after that, it did kind of fall apart because of internal schisms, discourses. Not surprising seeing the modern occult community. Have we really changed? Are we really any different than how they were back then? Uh, sorry with the T. But yeah, so they kind of fell apart. Uh, but there are modern groups that are Golden Dawn Lodges. They are not the same thing that the Golden Dawn was, but they follow the same formula. Uh, so in the Golden Dawn, there are degrees, and these degrees correspond to sort of your metaphysical growth. Uh, certain degrees focus more on rituals, certain on more like Rosicrucian ideas. Uh, and it's a very interestingly and intricate system. And so these lodges can initiate you through that. Uh, but they are not a proper lineage. So while there are a lot of sort of modern Golden Dawn groups, they aren't the original group. This is not a bad thing. I think a lot of people when they hear about these occult revival groups, they're like, oh, they're worthless if they're not the perfect original group. But even if they were, like groups like the Fraternity Saturni that have survived over the years, uh, how they are now and how they were when they originally came out are radically different because of how time changes and time evolves. Uh, as well, you can do the Golden Dawn solitarily. A lot of these rituals have, like, they're written for multiple people. Uh, like, there are certain roles that certain people in the group have based on their sort of trajectory and how much they've learned. And these, these roles play very specific parts of these big theatrical rituals. There are solitary approaches to the Golden Dawn. There's been some books written in the past couple years about how to approach Golden Dawn mechanisms as a solitary practitioner. As well, there are many Golden Dawn teachings and rituals that can easily be done solitarily. Uh, certain things like the middle pillar or the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram or the hexagram rituals are all largely solitary. And while they can be adapted to a group, they are easily done by an individual if they prefer to work in that style. As well, even members of Golden Dawn Lodges are recommended to keep a temple in their house. While that may sound insane, and as someone who lives in a New York City apartment, obviously I can't have like some grandiose temple room, uh, a lot of these Golden Dawn peoples replicate that. Because there is a very specific way the Golden Dawn Temple is set up and the tools are done very specifically. A big thing in the Golden Dawn is an emphasis on color and they have these whole color scales that represent different things, mostly Kabbalistically as well. Their tools are very specifically made. Uh, where certain parts of the tool represent different elemental things and different sephira. So everything's very, you know, corresponded, corresponded and specific. Um, but yeah, it, it, if you're trying to make it work on an apartment level, you can obviously sort of um, take liberty and it's not going to be as perfect as the ideal temple. Uh, and most of these Golden Dawn members don't have like a flawless temple in their house. That's why they go to lodges. Uh, but you can get as close as you want and you can really try to replicate the feeling that these people who have physical locations can get. Um, as well, a lot of the tools are really specific and a lot of the tools when you look for them online can be very expensive, but a lot of them are pretty easily made. I know in there's one Golden Dawn book, I'm going to link it in the description, that actually gives sort of instructions on how to build them. Because I have noticed Etsy prices that sell these tools, while I really respect those sellers, um, they can kind of charge a lot. So I would really recommend making these things on your own. Uh, Brief word from our sponsors. This video is sponsored by Goetic Impressions. Uh, certain Golden Dawn style tools you can get from Goetic Impressions uh, for a relatively reasonable rate. 
as Etsy can get so, so expensive, uh, Goetic Impressions is much more affordable. Uh, while they don't have like the full Golden Dawn range, as they're more Goetic focused, more Solomonic and more Grimoire tradition focused, they do have a bunch of Enochian supplies uh, and the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn did sort of cultivate the modern form of Enochian magic called Neo-Enochiana based on John Dee's personal records. Um, so if you really want to get some of that set up, you can really use Goetic Impressions because the banners and the Siglium Day have a lot of really important values in these rituals. Uh, so back to that, let's talk about the type of things that you will see in Golden Dawn. So of course you're going to see those iconic pentagram and hexagram rituals, but you're also at higher levels going to see things like Neo Nokiana. The Golden Dawn, even when done solitarily, has a very linear progression. So you begin with these things like the middle pillar exercise, the LVRP, and a lot of sort of visualizations and meditations based on Hermetic Kabbalah, and then with time you add more and more. So even if you do this solitarily and you don't have the proper sort of degree initiations, because like Freemasonry, when you advance to a new degree, they do a big formal initiation with a big ritual drama that sort of teaches you these things, uh, you still sort of progress in this very linear way. I think if you're someone who really likes structure and order and rhythm to your occultism, the Golden Dawn is a really good tradition for you. As someone who likes ceremony and structure, I find that it's very valuable. As well, if you're someone who likes a more theatrical ritual, Golden Dawn rituals are quite theatrical, you use a lot of sort of things like setups, you move around your temple, uh, like a lot of ritual furniture will be placed where it would be on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. Uh, ritual garb is really important. So in the Golden Dawn, like certain robes are certain colors. Uh, like, like if you wear a black robe, it means a specific thing. If you wear a right robe, it means a specific thing. Certain like head pieces are used and layments, which this is actually a layman, interestingly enough, um, are used very specifically for different things. So it's very intricate and there's a lot of effort put into the Golden Dawn structure and regalia. Uh, if you're someone who gets really into regalia, um, especially like if you have a thing for masonry or a history of masonry, the Golden Dawn is probably perfect for you. Uh, so my advice for new Golden Dawn practitioners is to start solitarily. A lot of these rituals can be done on your own and you can learn the foundations of them. You can learn, you know, the basic things. Uh, and then with time, you can seek out a lodge. Uh, if you decide to seek out a lodge, I would really recommend doing a lot of research because since these lodges are independently operated and they're not the same lodge that was back then, uh, you're really, your mileage is going to vary. Uh, I would avoid scams and make sure you're really researching groups before you join them, which you should do if you join any group ever. Please vet, please do the work. Um, as well, uh, I would recommend reading things beyond the Golden Dawn. So the Golden Dawn pulled from what came ahead of it. So if you look into things like Kabbalah, you look into things like the Abram Melon, you look into things like, you know, pretty much like Rosicrucianism and Gnosticism, you're going to see a lot of the roots of the Golden Dawn that will really help you understand how it evolved to what it is. Um, as well, I would pick up tarot. I would really recommend working with the Rider weight date over the Thoth if you're interested in Golden Dawn techniques. Uh, or of course the Hermetic Tarot because the Thoth more corresponds to a Thelemic understanding of Hermetic Kabbalah, whereas the Rider Waite can give you that original Golden Dawn flavor so you can have that foundation there. Um, so that's kind of my introduction to the Golden Dawn. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. And if you're subscribed for 93 days, you will be your Holy Guardian Angel. And that's definitely a serious total promise. Don't call the Better Business Bureau on me. Uh, uh, pick out something from Goetic Impressions using my code DotDarling10. This necklace is from there. And I, they sell all those lovely Enochian products. Um, and as well, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, uh, and pretty much everywhere. I'm on all social medias without Facebook. As well, I host an esoteric commentary podcast called Occultism with a Side of Salt on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And of course, that also has a Patreon if you want to get um, more content. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching. It means a lot. Uh, and goodbye.